Thank you for joining our presentation. Um, we know that Frank is giving a very important presentation on the Workers' Council. Uh, so we appreciate you coming to see this presentation that Katya and I are going to put on. Uh, my name is Heather. I'm from our New York office, and I manage all of our international clients. And I have my co-presenter, Katya. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our presentation. Uh, we are doing a quick presentation for you on the best practices and use cases for your employee app. And I'm based in Germany. I'm based in Chemnitz in one of our headquarters. And basically, we're doing what we're practicing, meaning like me and Heather and also the international teams we are like in constant communication within, with each other on our best practices and our clients and how they actually using the apps. So this is the focus on our presentation. And of course, so much of you already attended. We want to have a quick Q&A afterwards and also hear about your apps. Thank you, Katya. OK. So with our most successful clients, the three overlying factors we see the most, and when I say success, I'm talking about 50% of adoption or more. Uh, and then in those apps, they have content that's valuable, so content that's going to want to make users log into the app, content that's relatable, relatable not just to a sales executive or the marketing team in your headquarters, but just as relatable to their field worker out in the field on the other side of the world, and then content that's pushed out on a consistent basis. Well, of course, we want to look like more into the different um, success f factors that we've seen with all our most important clients. And we want to start, what do your employees consider valu valuable? And first of all, we need to kind of think what is value within your company, meaning that you really have to focus on your target group. And we see with a lot of clients that it starts basically from the top. So um, we think that global content has to be in one's app, such as leadership information, leadership news, also like information on human resources in the company. And also we see very often the information about IT news as well. But Let's look more deeply how specific customers are doing it. We see with a lot of customers that they're having like a stakeholder letter. We have customer who has l having like a fixed channel just for the CEO. You can see it here. We have a lot of um, US clients who are working with a personal signature of the CEO. And also what we see is like asking the CEO direct um, questions, for instance, Mercedo Russia, one of our apps, they have like 89 adoption rate. They were very good with this leadership information spreading this directly with those specific channels. And then we have also human resource information. And here are like great examples. We have one client. It's a German healthcare client, Hand in Hand Pflege. They're really focusing on HR information. They have um, several different folders within the app, for instance, like a welcome folder, a new hire folder, information about HR, FAQ, we have, we see a lot of policies within the app, we put all together in one folder, and even like clients are using forms to uh, inform their um, customers about their employees about um, HR information. And also we see a lot of clients using um, information on IT. It's like very important um, topic as well. For instance, we see like clients who have channels uh, with updates on new uh, information security trainings. We have one client, it's also a US client, SAK construction with 86% adoption rate. And they even have integrated uh, by using the form plugins like IT request tickets. And moreover, we see like examples of tips and tricks actually like setting up your email, setting up like the tools that you're using within the company. But when we are looking at this global content, it's just one success factor. Of course, we have to go more deeply. So handing it over now to Heather. Thank you, Katya. Um, yeah, so global content is really valuable um, to everybody in the company, especially um, human resources. and. IT and information security, everybody needs to know those things. Um, but a little bit further down, we have regional content, 
which is very important for all your regional offices and your regional teams and departments. Um, you can have uh, you know, your regional content for your office, for your location, for specific teams within those regions. And then over here, um, if you're a client, you probably recognize our user management section of the app, and that's where you can create all of your user groups and kind of target uh, content that way. Uh, you can have internal groups and you can have open groups. So users can kind of choose what content they want to see in the open groups. And then internal groups is how you would target those specific user groups. So when we talk about regional content, like what exactly are we talking about? So maybe you have uh, global offices, and each office has very specific instructions on uh, maybe guest check-ins, or maybe there's certain parking requirements for certain offices. So over here, we have like a local resource. You can even offer, I see a lot of um, like discount pages in employee apps, so local restaurant discounts, uh, movie pass discounts for that uh, region. Um, and again, uh, you have global offices and maybe you have a lot of uh, field workers out in the field and weather reports could be very important for them regionally. So you want, they want, maybe they can't go to work because of the weather, they need to know that. And you can push out notifications on weather reports. Uh, here we have a separation of London. We have specific departments in the London news and then we have sales and we have regional sales here. Uh, we also have our spaces feature, so you can give uh, clients or give your employees their own space, and maybe an office has their own space, and within that office, you can even further target within the office space. You can have user groups for teams and departments within the space, and all of the channels are targetable, all the plugins are targetable, so you can have forms specific to locations, event and calendars and things that are very just specific to those users. And they really, this is the information they want to see. And then over here is just on the admin side channel level, you kind of see the different uh, targeted channels to the different regions. Okay, so valuable global content, regional content, super important for all your users, no matter where they are. But secondary to valuable content is having relatable content. And this is really, really important. Um, I would say it could be one of the most important um, factors, success factors of the quality of the content you put in your app. And uh, what do I mean when I say relatable content? So recognition. Employees love to be recognized. They make them really feel special, especially again if they're off-site and they're being recognized by the headquarters. That's really awesome for them. Uh, some engagement co or some contests and prizes, so some, some fun in the app. Um, People love quizzes, people love winning stuff um, in general, so that's great. And then engagement, and I know everybody says engagement and it's kind of a broad term. <laughs> and uh, the last presentation he spoke a lot about engagement. And what I mean when I say engagement, I mean users actually interacting in the app. Like they can actually get in the app and do things. They can submit forms, they can do contests and prizes, they can do um, like a peer nominated recognition, like really getting in the app, not just reading straight information from a news feed. Still me. So <laughs> into recognition, some specific examples of recognition. Uh, here we have US client Brinks. They do um, regional team members of the month. So they have different channels for their different regions. Really popular. There's always a lot of uh, likes and shares and comments on uh, recognition and again people generally like to talk about themselves and they like to read about information regarding people they actually know similar to Facebook that's why Facebook's so popular uh, so a channel like this is very popular um, dream has a whole feedback section they use the employee happiness plugin and they use our forms plugin so users can give some feedback they can do recognition like I said peer uh, peer nominated recognition and then over here we have on a, a lot of you may have a start kind of a landing page in your app. You can have like a birthday spotlight widget or um, we have a chat bot. So you can have your chat bot pushing out congratulatory uh, notifications to individual users on their birthdays or their um, higher dates and things like that. And again, it's really important for users to feel loved by their company. So that is always a good thing. <laughs> And then I do have a little um, statistic here from the world's largest HR professional society, um, SHRM. I looked it up, it's legitimate. 
Um, they, did a, they conducted a survey and they found that 69% of employees said they would work harder and be more productive if they were better appreciated and recognized. So you think you have really great employees, you recognize them, they become more productive, your revenue goes up, hopefully. That's the intent. Okay. Thank you, Heather, you did a great job. <laughs> so now moving on to something fun, like contests and prizes. And we here offer like a right right range for this and what we see is most successful with our apps is like interactive and fun content so like where actually people can either share their story or they can just um, interact with the company's idea or even just for fun and kind of showing well, look what I did one you can just uh, put it on your news feed and feeds and say basically this client uh, this employee just won a prize and this is really really engagement and we have a great example from Florida it's the trade wind resort they have like 96 percent of uh, adoption rate it's a very nice and fancy hotel close to the beach so they decided to uh, share their story with the employees so the task was to use a selfie stick and make a really nice photo with a fish and they decided the best picture did actually win a prize and they also put it like directly within the app and this is like very specific use case and we see this with a lot of clients moreover we have our quiz plugin and this can be used on the one hand for fun but we see with a lot of clients, they're also um, using it like for infotainment. So they're uh, sharing also information with the quiz and asking questions about certain products um, with for their employees. And of course, we have the world championship just around the corner. And like everyone is engaging in soccer, especially for the world championship. So we have this special plugin. A lot of clients are um, using it and branding it for their own, and this is like an amazing chance to kind of get your people engaged. So what is engagement? Meaning that we want to click, first of all, yes. <laughs> and we want like users uh, liking, using the app, communicating with the app, and the best way is the uh, messenger, like the chat plugin, like everyone loves Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and basically on the mobile device, this is the best way to communicate, and it's just an easy way to get, get people also in, involved and engaged within the app. Moreover, I already mentioned it, this sharing your story idea, and we have a, a lot of clients who are using this. Here on the um, right side, we see Ventia, who is like using the section photo of the day, where they're like uh, every employee can um, upload a picture and show the employee moment. We also have a lot of engagement channels. For instance, Leadec, a very global player, is using a channel named called The Voice and are sh basically every employee can upload a picture and get some like and engagement with it. So those are just a few examples. And um, now we are coming to the third part, Heather. We're really speeding through these points. There's only three points. <laughs> so um, it's really good to have valuable content. So you want your global content, your HR information, your IT information. You want your regional content because you want your regional offices to have all the information at their fingertips that's relevant to them. And then you want your relatable content, the recognition, the quizzes, the prizes, the fun, the engagement, all that. But if you don't have all of this really great content on a consistent basis, users just, they don't care, they forget, they don't know. So it's really important that you have um, a consistent push of content through your app. And how do you do that? With an active news feed. We consider an active news feed three to five articles a week. Um, and kind of to help you with that, you can um, schedule posts to go out. So if you're the single person uh, adding content in the app, you can kind of bulk upload it and kind of schedule it out to go out throughout the week. That would be one way. Um, having a social wall or a social channel is another really great way because users are constantly uploading their own content, their pictures, could be work-related. Um, someone mentioned yesterday in one of their presentations they had a social wall and the user is kind of self-regulated, um, which is generally the case that we see with a lot of our clients. Um, very, very rarely do we have clients um, having to delete comments or posts and things like that. Um, so social channels are really good, scheduling, but 
really what is like the most important thing when it comes to consistency is not being the only single person that's managing the app for everyone. It's impossible. And generally, the person who's the app manager is not 100% dedicated, hired by the company to manage the app solely. And maybe it's an HR person, an internal comms person. Maybe they're still doing this, so all the other social media for the company. And it's just a single point of failure. And we talk about successful clients, 50% or more engagement. But the clients who are really struggling with pushing their adoption rate up, generally it's because they are the single person putting content in the app. So it's really, really important to empower your users, empower local content creators, giving them something to do in the app, uh, empower your local leadership. You can incentivize them. You can say, you know, whatever office has the most users in the app by X date gets X money, an extra vacation day, a prize, like something like that. Of course, you don't want to force people in the app, but it's a nice kind of backwards way to get people into the app. Um, but I, I really can't stress how important it is that you really need more than one person putting content in the app. And it all kind of ties back into the valuable content and the relatable content. Because if you're in headquarters and the internal comms team or on the HR team and you're pushing out all this content, you have these field workers on the other side of the world that are not going to likely relate to the content. Yes, yes, they need the global content, but it's really important that you have like the local leadership and empower kind of your local content creators. Very, very important. Um, and then publication. When I talk about publication, I mean what type of consistent content are you pushing out? So you have your HR updates, um, your IT security updates things like that, but then you can also do some fun things. You can do, let's see, you can do like bi-monthly contests, and you can kind of get users excited with push notification, notifications, letting them know that the contest is coming up or the quiz is releasing. Um, you could do bi-weekly uh, leadership letters where the CEO is directly addressing their users, and again, using the push notifications, you can kind of get users excited that these are things uh, coming out in the app. Uh, maybe like every third Wednesday, you could do a, the peer nominated recognition, so they get excited about that. Um, but it's really important that it's consistent, is the main key, and it's fun, and you get your users excited, and it forms habits, and um, similar to muscle memory, where users kind of train themselves, or they become trained with the consistent content, that they just don't even think twice, or, oh, I forgot I had that app, and the information's in there, it just becomes natural to them to wake up, open their app, and uh, look at their newsfeed and see what's going on in their region or otherwise. And then thirdly, push notifications is super important just because it helps with the immediate release of information to your users, engages them further. Um, we have a statistic, three times higher rate of readers with push notifications, and then 75% read the message within the first hour. Um, we also have the email notifications, but someone else had mentioned that email gets like very saturated throughout the day. You go home, you wake up, you go to work the next morning, you have 60 emails, you're not gonna read them all. Um, so the push notifications are very important in terms of pushing out consistent content and good content that's interesting to your users. So like I said, that was a pretty short presentation. You guys probably are happy it's the last day <laughs> and we didn't go too long. Um, and we mentioned earlier uh, in the introduction of the presentation that we like, sh we like as a team sharing ideas between across the water um, and with the t internal team, but even more valuable is sharing client ideas and what clients are doing in their app. And you have these, uh, we had all these images of, and those were all real images. We didn't uh, fabricate them. They're like very we did use some of, we use our own app um, as expected <laughs> and, and we do, we are very engaged in it, we're very interactive with it, but those were all real screen grabs of client, what they have in their uh, app. So it's really relevant and we kind of, if you guys are open to it, would love to hear what's in your app, obviously nothing sensitive, <laughs> but if you have uh, content in there that you consider any of these things valuable, relatable, consistent, and you're open to sharing, we would love to hear about that so we can kind of have an open sharing session. Any volunteers? Oh, yes. From yesterday until now, sorry. From yesterday until now, I've been hearing social channels, you know, within the app. 
So I'm thinking about my country, of course, and I don't know how is it globally. Uh, would it be possible that I might, as an employee, post something that would be insulting? And how would you be able to manage that? Because the main concept of social um, challenge uh, channels are to actually engage more people and more employees and to have a better communication. And of course, that would affect the performance, you know, overall. So what if I, as an employee, post something or like my line manager would see that or, you know, other employees and it would be a, like an inner challenge? How, how can we manage that? This is one of the, honestly, one of the main concerns that I'm thinking, because I know it's very efficient, the social, uh, you know, effect of it, but how do you do that, at least on staff face, if you have social uh, channels? This, sorry, thank you. Great question. Um, yeah, so social channels are great. Like I said, in the experience that I've had at Staff Base with my clients globally, not just in the US who have social channels, it's really like self-regulated. You can't stop someone. There's nothing stopping someone posting negative things really anywhere on in any social media forum. Um, but you kind of learn and then you, you, kind, you want to give your users the tools to be successful and be engaging in their company. So you kind of have to trust them. That's the first step. <laughs> it's trusting that they're going to be putting not negative comments on the social media page or on the social channel. Um, I guess secondary, you could roll back their uh, rights to that channel, which I don't really recommend. Um, but usually if uh, there's something, someone's posting something negative, um, usually there's something in the company internally that's going on, which isn't really related to the social channel of the app, but maybe they're upset with their manager or something. And maybe that could even be an open dialogue for the manager to go to that individual. Of course, you can remove the content and then go and speak to that employee and say, what's going on? Like, give me your honest feedback. How do you feel? Um, but definitely you should trust your employees because without trusting them, they, they won't trust you, so. If I could maybe elaborate on that a little bit if you're interested in my opinion that I think something negative isn't really negative always. People should be allowed not to be always happy about things, but to express also negative opinions on whatever they would like. But maybe more what you meant was offensive things towards someone and then I think I have to agree with the lady here. Uh, people will not really respond to those comments if they are just ignored and in most of the organization I don't think that there's many people that would like to offend someone else. So if those people come about then they will be just ignored and then they will stop the whatever they're doing because it's not getting any attention. So I wouldn't be worried that much about this one. But other than that, I really agree with what you said. There was other hands I saw. Someone else have questions? No more questions. Any volunteers? I can see a volunteer, one of my clients. He's very successful with his app. And maybe he wants to share um, the information about his special channel he proposed. Um, just introduce quickly yourself and tell us about your special channel. Hi, I'm Robin. I'm from EGO, a supplier for white goods. Um, our special, special channel is uh, concerning the babies of our employees. So we have the possibility to um, share the photos of their new babies, newborns, um, to all other employees, which is really successful. All people like it. And yeah, it was a nice idea, I think. Perfect. Anyone else? I think also Magna is using the CEO channel quite often. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> you want to share some insights? Uh, okay, I'm from Magna, uh, automotive supplier, and we have the app for one year, and we are very successful. And we have uh, two very famous channels, so the one is also the photo of the day. And 
Yes, the photo with the most likes uh, get a little present and is on the headline. And the second channel is uh, drei Fragen an, so three questions uh, for one employee. So uh, the first was our uh, GM. And now we have also some workers or some logistics. And uh, f so from every, um, uh, all of the uh, company and um, every employee can uh, give uh, some questions and the three questions with the most likes we um, make a little video and this is so with the answers of the questions, yeah. Great, something else to add? Does anybody use the con any of the content that we talked about on the slides? Do you guys see that? Do you use those things in your app? You mentioned the video channel, photo of the day. Who's using the meal plan? Yeah, <laughs> meal plan is also a very good way to kind of get some information and content that's valuable. We mm -hmm. have a meal plan in the app, but we don't use the plugin. Right, there's like a lot of workarounds. You can also just use a static page and put the content in, yes. 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 Because the meal plan, all good, all thanks, but you have to add one meal after the other at once. No, no, many people are really interested in this manual, at least in our organization. So we just post the PDF with the client on that week as a post in the True. Thank you for sharing. Um, yes, Johnny. <laughs> um, so this was not too much about content, but um, we're just getting started out with our app. So I'm uh, in Smith's group, um, and our CEO is really supportive, uh, and we sold it to him quite well. So. Uh, yeah. So our CEO is very bought into it, and he's very visible on the app, and that's really helped with people seeing the value of it. So when someone's posting content in the app and he's responding to it, uh, that gives them a level of interaction with him that they've not had before. Uh, and it just opens up two-way conversation in the company. So that's just a little tip from someone getting started. Thank you for sharing. Yes, leadership news is very important, but when you have your CEO or your C-levels or your executive levels actually talking to the users that maybe aren't in headquarters, um, probably maybe have never even seen the CEO of their company, gets them really excited that they're really cared for in their company. And kind of to go back to what you were saying about the, um, the mail plan plugin, that's, that was unfortunate for you. <laughs> um, but the great thing about the app is there is so much flexibility in what you can do and where you can post it and how you can post it. Um, so maybe you don't like the meal plan, but maybe your meal plan's posted Externally somewhere else, you can use the Embedded Pages plugin and embed it right into the app, so that way the user is still not leaving the app, but it's just as easily accessible. And even like that, this is one of the most, uh, one of the most read news in the app is a meal plan. Yeah. It's very popular. Um, I do have to say it's much more popular in Europe than it is in the US. Um, I actually don't have a single client in the US who's using the meal plan. Um, it's really not that popular there. Um, and th I know the advent calendar um, is more of a European thing. Um, I did have some US clients ask me what it even was. <laughs> they didn't know how to use it. Um, but once they learned, it was really fun. Um, when SAK Construction did uh, Christmas, they used the advent calendar. They didn't call it an advent calendar. They just called it the Christmas quiz. Um, same concept. So but that's the great thing about the app. It's super, super flexible. There's tons of plugins that you can play around with. And if one way doesn't work, just reach out to your customer success manager and we'll give you five more ways that you can do it. So, any more questions? Examples? Hey, yeah. Consistency. When you were talking about publication, you mentioned tests, like personal. And what, what did you mean by publication, like putting PDF for? When I said a little bit confusing, but publication in terms of what, public, what publication are you pushing out consistently aside from just your active news feed? So that could be the bi-monthly contests, the bi-weekly leadership letters, things that users 
form habits and just expect that information to be there. Um, Lauren from Franciscan Children had mentioned when Carla left, um, kind of the downtick in content, and her nurses would come up to her and say, I just got in the app and it's the same content that was there last week and that's really sad for us. And she, was, she said she was like surprised that people were even like caring about that and looking for that. So again, when you have publication, the bi-monthly contest, the bi-weekly letters, every third Wednesday you have you know, peer nominated recognition, it just goes back to forming habits with your users. So it just becomes natural for them to look in the app for information and for content without having to think where can I find that HR policy? Which HR system was it on? How do I even log into my intranet? Where's the terminal? Like all these things get really confusing for headquarters, but even for workers that aren't or like out in the field who don't have access to terminals and their intranet and things like that. Yeah. Hi. Um, we're we're just getting started with the pilot phase in June, so uh, I'm I'm just building up the structure, and I was wondering, did anybody ever have a problem with um, picture rights? Because if you do a social wall and everybody can post a picture, I mean, there's property rights uh, of pictures, there's uh, the, the personality rights of the people that are on the pictures. So if, if I have a team and somebody posts a picture and somebody doesn't want to be in the app on the picture, so do I have to delete it if everybody has a, uh, something to share how they, are they reacted on something like this, or did it happen at all? Yeah. Anybody experienced anything like that? Okay. I'll say I haven't experienced it myself, <laughs> so I'm assuming the clients probably haven't either. Um, but the app is internal, um, and it's you're not forcing your users on it, so they elect to be on it. Um, so maybe you take a group picture and two of those people in the group picture aren't in the app, um, or yeah, they aren't logged in the app. Um, I'm sure they can come to you and say, I don't take that picture down, I don't want to be in the app. But it is internal, so it's employees looking at other employees. Um, I guess in theory, an employee could copy that picture and post it elsewhere, but again, that's like a, more of like an internal thing. It doesn't really have to do with like the content in the app, it's just more of the quality of that type of person, <laughs> I guess, yeah. Going into the back, to Lidek, she has something to add, there you go. Thank you, yeah, my name is Marion from Lidek and actually I was um, about to raise the same question as you just did and um, with the pictures um, because we all get all this training on data security <laughs> because of the new guidelines coming up in May or being more enforced towards the end of May, so it's a, it's a big deal. So what I'm actually doing and the editors, when we post something and we have pictures, I actually have sheets I have people sign um, they are okay with it. However, we have an in our activity channel where everybody can post and it's called Your Voice. And obviously I c have no control over that. <laughs> so when people um, post pictures with their group and post something, so um, right now we go along and we think the risk is calculable, <laughs> so to speak, but um, I, I see that point too. So we, um, we allow it for, for the, like the, the bottom up and um, as it, yeah, you can assume people are um, know it's going to be in the app and they're okay with it. But um, whatever stories we do, I try to have some um, something written just in case they told me if some um, if the data protection people come by, and then they want to see like where do you have your files, what is your deletion policy, and whatever. So um, I guess it's maybe that's a practical approach to to control what you can and trust in the rest. <laughs> Something else? Questions, ideas, insights? I was going to mention, um, back to your question about the pictures, I have some clients who actually, instead of allowing users to openly post and giving them those editing rights, um, they set up a form where users submit the pictures to the form and then the administrator will look at the pictures and then post it. So that could be kind of a workaround for that. Questions? Yeah? yeah. Uh, probably because I'm so new in this technology. Um, I was 
I'm still thinking about the content that you mentioned. How far we go with the content, I'm trying to put it into words, and I hope that would make sense. Um, because you talked about pricing, uh, the prices, the contests, you know, in, in order to engage employees with the app. Um, how do you know that it's enough? Because you don't, we, we don't want employees to be off the line with their daily work and be too much into the app. So then the CEO would be probably complaining that it's not working. Actually, they're more engaged with the app than what they have to be doing usually daily work. So this is one of my concerns because I w I'm thinking of being a partner, hopefully, of Steph Basin. Talk about Steph Basin. I know if I would be able to pitch this as an idea to companies, the, the, the first question would be that, how far you go? And when do you know, as an expert, that it's enough? Now let's work. So how do you manage that? Was that clear? Hopefully, thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, well, if you're concerned about your, I mean, it would be awesome if your users were just loving the app so much they were in it all the time. Um, obviously, that would be great. Um, and you had 100% engagement, which is nearly impossible. Um, but if you're concerned about those things, you can kind of scale them back. Um, you can do it regionally or department-wise. Um, so maybe, or even uh, time zone-wise, you can do it regionally for a time zone and push out quizzes that are after work hours for one region with the targeting. And then the quiz can be pushed out for the other side of the world during their non-work hours. And you can just use the notifications to remind them like during the day, they don't have their phone, it's in the break room because they're you know, working in their factory. And you push out a notification, hey, a reminder, the quiz goes live at 7 p.m. tonight. Like, make sure you participate for that region and then the next region, whatever's in their time zone. So you could scale back that way. And then again, just department-wise, if you don't want your field workers looking at their phone, maybe you can just open the quizzes up for your desk workers who are sitting in front of their desk that maybe it only takes them two minutes. Um, because we do have the web app as well for the desktop, <laughs> so they can also access that information. Yeah? There is also an option, if I'm not mistaken, you, could, you can limit the session duration in the settings. So if it really gets bad, then you <laughs> just set it up for half an hour or an hour, and they just get annoyed logging out all the time. So it could be a way to you know, limit the session duration. Yep, there's a security section in the app that allows you to regulate. Um, you can close all sessions for all users if there's a security breach. You can individually log out users, deactivate users, delete users when you have full admin rights. So you can kind of, I mean, probably not the, the best way to go about it if a user's really excited and you just deactivate them right away because they're too busy. I, don't, I, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, maybe just having a face-to-face -face conversation with them would work better. Um, but yeah, you can definitely, if you so choose, log them out of the app if you feel they're abusing it. Yeah. Good. Yes, absolutely. Questions? Any more questions? Yes, sir. Uh, so I was just thinking back at some of the stuff that we've done recently and what's got uh, some traction. And one thing that we did that was really easy um, was we actually stole some of our content from our social media plan uh, where we'd done like a series of social cards. So just like little images that we're sharing with, uh, this was in the run up to Earth Day, so it was some key stats on our environmental performance. Uh, and our employees generally aren't looking at our social media, but they are looking at the app. Um, and they feel quite proud about the fact that we're making quite good progress in these environmental issues. Uh, and so little things like that, they were quite easy to make, but they got really good engagement. Uh, so little social cards and things like that have worked quite well for us. Hearing about people they actually know. That's why Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all these things are so popular because you just want to see what everyone's doing at all times everywhere, um, which can be a negative thing. <laughs> but uh, we can also uh, increase engagement. So social channels, always good. Any more questions, comments, concerns, examples, use cases? Um, I'm not sure if it was 
mentioned in some um, ways so far, but we use it also for events. So if we have a big event coming up, um, then we have like a, a separate folder and then everything that you need, like how do you get there, have your ticket, and um, yeah, something that comes up maybe uh, really sh with really short notice and everything is collected in the folder and uh, yeah, this is quite fortunate. Though. We have our sales at staff base been using push notifications to alert us when we're supposed to be here, at what time, when the next presentation starts. Um, another great opportunity with the events plugin and the push notifications. Um, just coordinating of events. Katya, do you have any final words? Uh, do you guys mind if we take a selfie? Maybe? People in the back, maybe don't worry, you're too far away. So don't be concerned, just front row. Smile. And we'll put it on our social wall and see how everybody was excited for our presentation. <laughs>